This episode of the Practice of Therapy podcast is sponsored by Mental Health Match, mentalhealthmatch.com, and also sponsored by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. Over 15 years ago, when I started my private practice, I had to learn a lot, and most of it the hard way, and I don't think you need to do the same. Hi, I'm Gordon Brewer, a licensed psychotherapist, and welcome to the Practice of Therapy podcast, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. Join me in this journey of discovery as we have conversations with other leaders and professionals in both the mental and allied health fields. Join us as we explore both the business and clinical sides of running a private practice. I'm Gordon Brewer, and this is episode number 266 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. So glad you've joined us, and if this is the first time for you to listen to the podcast, glad you've made it here, and hope you'll come back for more. And if you've been listening for a while, so glad to have you back. And uh, do take time to follow us wherever you might be listening to your podcasts. So I'm looking forward to you hearing from my guest today, Steve Turney, and Steve is the person behind the Mental Health Marketing Conference, which is a an annual conference that kind of took uh, went virtual during the COVID pandemic, but they're back live now. And um, Steve was just a really great person to talk to and listen to. Uh, I think once you hear from him, you will understand why. But we have a conversation in this episode just about. Uh, you know, kind of the state of mental health marketing, but also just the state of our profession at this point and how it's changing and what we're doing differently as far as reaching our ideal clients and that sort of thing. So stay tuned and listen in to my conversation with Steve here in just a moment. But before we get to Steve, one of the things that I want to uh, let you know about is um, obviously you're listening to this podcast and most of the people that listen to this podcast are probably in the mental health field, but have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Big question there. So here's the thing that I've got coming up, putting together with my good friend and colleague, James Marlin, who is part of the Sitecraft Network, which this podcast and several others are part of. And through that collaboration, we're putting together a course on how to start a podcast. And we're going to take you from the A to Z of starting a podcast. And there's lots of different reasons you'd might want to have a podcast. But one of the things that I've learned in doing this podcast since 2017 is, is that number one, I get to uh, connect with a lot of great people out there. Um, people just like you that might be listening to this podcast where I interview people about the process of starting a private practice, what they've learned and just sharing their story. And I dare say that you've got a story to tell. So if you would like to start a podcast and there's lots of reasons to do that, number one is, is that it will give you a greater reach, um, create a larger network for yourself. But also, here's a little secret here, is that there are ways to monetize your podcast or make money from your podcast in different ways. So if this is something that you're interested in, I've got a live course that's going to be held on March the 31st. Um, We'll be holding it on Zoom, but I'd love for you to enroll in this course. And if you can find, you can find out more about it by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash podcast course. And that'll get you to the landing page for that, where you can learn more about that. And also feel free to reach out to me with any questions about that. But again, this is the first time I'm announcing this course here on this podcast. But again, go to practiceoftherapy.com slash podcast course 
and you can find out more about the course and how to enroll. And we're going to limit the number of people that enroll in the course just to make it a little more intimate. So go ahead and take advantage now as you're hearing this and go ahead and enroll in the course to find out more. And real quickly here before we get to my conversation with Steve, I'd love for you to hear more from our sponsors of the podcast, Mental Health Match and also Therapy Notes, along with a message from one of my fellow podcasters on the Sightcraft Network. Most therapists know that directories can be a good source of referrals, but which directories are really worth it? We are excited to share with you Mental Health Match. Mental Health Match helps nearly 50,000 clients find a therapist every month. Their smart technology ensures you get shown to only the clients who are a good fit for your practice based on the client's presenting issues, cultural needs, and budget. And their matching system helps clients feel an initial sense of confidence in you as a clinician. If you're looking for a new way to get more clients, try Mental Health Match for free today. Just go to mentalhealthmatch.com and use referral code PRACTICE for 90 days free. Trusted by thousands of clinicians across the U.S., Mental Health Match is ready to help you grow your practice with the clients you want. That's mentalhealthmatch.com with referral code PRACTICE. Hi everyone, I'm Aaron Potratz. And I'm Nathan Hawkins. If you don't know us yet, we are the voices behind the Shrink Think podcast, which is part of the Sightcraft network of podcasts. We are so proud to be a part of this network, along with the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer and the great work he is doing to help people in their journeys. And if you haven't discovered the Shrink Think podcast, you can find us wherever you listen to your podcast. We love for you to join us as we seek to help you with your relationships, your healthcare practices, and your therapy journey. Join us as we bridge the gap between clients and therapists. And be sure to check us out at shrinkthink.com forward slash podcast and take our free e-course. And have a great day. One of the keys to a successful private practice is having the right systems and processes in place to make things run as smoothly as possible. With a system like Therapy Notes, you'll have more time to spend with what matters most, your clients. Therapy Notes is a complete practice management system with everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, meet with patients remotely, create rich documentation, and bill insurance right at your fingertips. Their streamlined software is accessible wherever and whenever you need it. Your clinical records will be secure with less paperwork, which means you can give a much better quality of care. It's the EHR that Gordon uses in his practice. Be sure to check them out today by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And be sure to use the promo code Gordon to get two months free. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast. And I'm so glad to have with me today, Steve Turney. Hi, Steve. Gordon, it's really nice to be here. How are you? Good, good. And I, I've been looking forward to this conversation just because Steve and I had a, had the opportunity to connect and talk about what he's doing and kind of how he's involved with just our whole field and profession, and in particular, the mental health marketing conference that's coming up in September of 2023. So, but Steve, as I start with everyone, tell folks a little bit more about yourself and how you've landed where you've landed. Yeah. So I live uh, about an hour North of Nashville where my uh, wife and I and our daughter live. We play and work a lot in Nashville. And then we, uh, we live just a little bit North. Uh, It's famous for Corvettes and uh, maybe Fruit of the Loom and Giant Caves is what we're known for. <laughs> so uh, maybe not all at the same time, but those those are yeah. fun. Um, and then how I got to this conference, I'm the owner and executive director of uh, an, an annual event called the Mental Health Marketing Conference, and it gathers uh, providers and therapists and clinicians together with executive directors and CEOs And then a lot of dedicated marketers, either from a creative agency or uh, maybe in-house at a behavioral health uh, organization or addiction treatment center. 
And uh, I'm excited to connect with you, Lisa Mustard, one of um, one of the folks within Sightcraft uh, and that network uh, connected with me a few weeks ago. And as it always goes, one thing leads right to another in these relationships. So I'm really excited to be talking with you. Yes, yes. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful to Lisa for um for introducing us and and Steve and I got uh, really kind of built a connection um just talking about we we have in some ways kind of similar growing up paths and that sort of thing and so that was that was fun to talk about so but uh oh, yeah. yeah so um I I guess Steve we can just start with um tell folks about the conference that's upcoming and just I guess too, just how you kind of came up with the idea and got got involved in this. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I was a pastor's kid, and I think mm-hmm. uh, you, there's mm-hmm. some connection there, perhaps. Mm-hmm. And and I tell people my dad was a pastor, so naturally I went into sales, which is kind of a funny way to <laughs> say that I was in the I was in the front row for a lot of my youth for a really great teacher, somebody who could spin an analogy or a metaphor any which way and just had a connection with getting up on stage and connecting with people. And I think that that still is something that echoes in me and, and a strength or a, a, you know, a gift that I've got that I try to use. And it's, it's part of this conference, but I, I did not start it. A good friend of mine named Austin Harrison started it eight years ago. And um, I'd probably defer to his story, but needless to say, there were some mental health issues that uh, came up with some significant others in his life at the time. And uh, it just brought to uh, light his uh, sort of need to know more about mental health. And so he pursued uh, starting this conference as a way to maybe uh, combine one strength of his, which is marketing and community building and creativity with maybe a weakness of his, which is, hey, I need to know more about this space. And so you know, eight years ago, uh, he was two weeks out from the first conference and 20 people were signed up maybe, and they were mostly friends and family. And so humble beginnings, he tapped into what is a wonderful Nashville community of people in healthcare and entrepreneurialism and beyond. And he had more than a hundred people show up for the first event. Um, and he did that on his own. He, he pushed that boulder on his own for three or four years when I turned 40, I went to a monastery for a few days and sort of used that big round number as an intentional check-in point. And I didn't grow up in the high church. And so I was a little bit out of sorts and out of my element. Um, but it was a neat experience. It's called the Abbey of Gethsemane in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And I came away with this idea, this message of help people in need, those four words. So I started to you know, fill up people's cars with gas and things that were kind of clumsy, but different than my normal behaviors as a way to stumble down this road. And then I realized I I know who I can really help. It's me. I'm a, I'm a big problem in my own life. So mm-hmm. part of that solution finding was to engage with a licensed professional counselor in the Nashville Brentwood area. And we work through those heavy topics, shame and masks and family and all that, uh, all that good stuff. And so came out of that with some real clarity. Uh, I mean, some scales really fell off my eyes and made progress. Not to say talk therapy is the silver bullet or for everyone, but it certainly can be an answer in, in your experience in your life. And I, I felt like at the time there was there was this person who was truly seeing me and actively engaged with me. And I think that's part of the magic of talk therapy. So fast forward, Austin and I were having coffee one day, chit-chatting about uh, different things. He's at a world-class animation studio. And he said, uh, the conference came up. And I said, you know, how's that going? It had been on my radar, being an, always in the Nashville market. And uh, he said, oh, you know, I, I, I could really use a little bit of help, probably booking speakers and sponsors this year. Just life gets in the way sometimes. Mm-hmm. And those four words fell out as just how can I help? And so, you know, different associations and, and career uh, development in my life, I had come across uh, experiences where I'd book speakers and sponsors. So I said, hey, that's kind of natural for me. Let me jump in and that was late 2018. So we mm-hmm. shipped a, a really neat conference in 2019, grew the organization a bit. And then we were raring to go for 2020. And 
uh, well, COVID was also raring to go right. and COVID, COVID tried to win, uh, but mm-hmm. I don't think it did. So we, um, we pivoted, we just had to change as we all did. We have to adapt and change. Mm-hmm. And the fastest to change is sometimes the people or the organizations that continue to go. So we went all virtual um, and we gave away tickets. Uh, we just wanted to provide the content. We had really generous sponsors cover some of the costs of live streaming and such. And so 700 plus people showed up and that was a win. And uh, and then 2021 was another challenging year trying to figure out what, what COVID was doing and all. And we decided to postpone, which was a really tough decision. Um, sure. and, and so leading us to 2022, we had just a really exciting event. We had Embark Behavioral Health Foundation as as our big sponsor, and then a host of other sponsors, some that have been with us for years and years. Um, and we're all, we're always so thankful for them because they make this experience. They just turned it into something uh, magical when it's mixed with the speakers that we bring and the attendees who show up. So 2022 was was our Phoenix Rising moment, is what I call it, mm-hmm. and we are really excited about this year too. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I think, uh, you know, one of the things that you said that I was thinking about was, um, you know, I think for most of us that are in this profession, as far as mental health providers, we all come to it out of a passion. I think for one, just being aware of our own kind of issues and things that we're working through and then seeing, seeing the value of helping others in that way. And, um, You know, I think that's to me when you think when I think about marketing your practice is is that you're able to get that message to people in a way that resonates with what they're struggling with and and able to see how you can help with all Mm. of that. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a really interesting insight. And Mm -hmm. you're right. I think uh, part of the passion is that we do have these experts and they have. Mm -hmm you know, clinically tested, rigorous expertise. And we, mm-hmm. we want that voice to get everywhere it needs to be. And even if their celebrity is confined to their block that they're on or their community or town, or maybe it's a national influencer, wherever that is, how can they start uh, local within their influence? And a picture I sometimes paint is that, you know, there's the therapist on the stage at Madison Square Garden and they have great things to say. And, and at the same time, how are they going to get their voice to the rafters up to the nosebleeds? And I Mm -hmm. think about that in terms of social determinants of health and health equity and uh, marginalized communities. And you need a microphone as, as great as you can be, you just can't yell that long, that loud. Mm -hmm. And so marketing is, is a, is a megaphone or a microphone for the clinician. And then another point you made, which is just as interesting to me is, is the, the power of advocacy. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, we don't necessarily have to defer and default to expertise as the only way up the mountain. There's also powerful lived experience and advocacy that can, you know, I see a lot of people enter the industry because of a changed personal life experience. And and we all know if we've had Mm -hmm. some of those moments in our life, how transformative they can be to set us on some different powerful path. Right, right. You know, and what the, another thing that's interesting, and the, this has been an observation of mine just over the last couple of years, is um, you know I've made connections with a lot of people that kind of specialize in marketing, mental health services, and that sort sure. of thing. And you know, the common thread that runs through with all of those people is people's stories is is that they had their own kind of mental health or emotional, um, not necessarily crisis, but issue that they were dealing with. And they remembered how difficult it was to find the right therapist for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so they, they go into kind of this whole mental health marketing field out of a sense of, I want to help others find the right person for them when they, when they go to seek services. Yeah, that that's that's a really evolving uh, field too, just from the individual standpoint. And then there is a groundswell of organizations and also private equity money sometimes fueling these initiatives and and these innovations to uh, help us connect better. Uh, for one, you know, with the state of things right now, and I don't, 
I don't believe we'll always have sort of the access challenges that we're experiencing right now. I mm-hmm. believe that we've we've through sort of moving past ignorance to awareness and beyond stigma in many cases. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've I think we've reached a point where we've kind of unearthed this demand that was always there. And so now the market has an opportunity to react to it. And then also because there's so much demand, I think a a provider can and should responsibly position their brand in a way that lets them do the kind of work they want to do most often, most efficiently without having to be so uh just have to work so hard at that all the time. You know, that's the beauty of marketing is the efficiencies mm-hmm. that come with um, saying what you do and what you don't do and and keeping up with the tools and technology. And that's that's tough in itself. So we see more and more creative agencies actually flock to this conference as a way to um, either learn about this industry that keeps running into them and they may not know mm-hmm. the language of mental health and behavioral health, or they have a roster of clients to the point that they've dedicated their entire uh, service portfolio to mental right. health organizations. Right, right. Yeah, and I think, uh, yeah, you know, as we, um, you know, this might be a good time to kind of pivot to talking about um, some of the trends just in mental health in general. And uh, I know for listeners of this podcast, they I'm sure they've heard me say this before, you know, one of the silver linings to the whole COVID pandemic is, is that it, it made it okay for people to talk about mental health issues Mm -hmm. and talk about the internal struggles that we all go through at different levels around our emotions and feelings and all of that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's interesting how COVID has that forced function of Mm -hmm. uh, causing us to change. And part of that is simply maybe not having another way forward except to go right through the obstacle forward and and Mm -hmm. talk about our problems and challenges and be creative in new ways to connect so you know i don't know i i don't know if i you and i would have connected exactly like this three Mm -hmm. or four years ago you know i didn't Mm -hmm. have this camera or this lighting or Mm -hmm. this approach that i could easily spin up and connect with you face to face eye to eye right here Mm -hmm. so that's just one example. And, and then I do think the, the ways that maybe uh, in the broadest sense, different generations react to, um, you know, talking about mental health, that's exciting to see. Mm -hmm. I was having, I was having a pizza last night with a, with a, a new friend of mine who was introduced to me by somebody else. And, you know, he's maybe in his sixties or seventies, I don't know. And he served um, in London and Germany and, and he had a specific a frame of reference for how to talk about mental health or not. And it was so neat to be able to sit with him. He would look at me as a younger person, but I would look, I would look also upstream to, you know, the Gen Z and, and folks who are way more advanced than I ever was at their age Mm -hmm. about just being real about what we're going through and that it's, it's so interwoven with the body and the mind. I think that's what we're realizing is mm-hmm. healthcare has left this last bastion, this last silo of mental health. And um, it's it's sort of it's sort of this untapped area that we're still just now exploring. And I I'm so excited about it. I call this trend the the greatest space race since we've uh, we, since we decided to try to put a person on mm-hmm. the moon, um, right. which is not the outer space, but it's just right between our ears. And there's just as big of a universe. And we may never we may never get to the point where we fully tap into the depths of that universe. We're always going to need a safety net for things that we don't understand. Just like we can get too far out in space and just I don't think we could ever get there, just our own human limitations. But that's mm-hmm. not to say we don't do this exciting work and we don't make progress. And, you know, one of the biggest things that mental health coaching and therapy did for me was to take more agency in my own life. And mm-hmm. ultimately, that's where you start is at home. Change begins at home, even if you're thinking about changing the world or or landing on Mars. You, you know, it's it's something just as exciting, I think, to plumb the depths of, of what my mind is. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm seeing. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I was doing, doing some supervision with one of my, my employees yesterday. Yes. 
she's a, a pre-licensed uh, clinician. And we were just talking about, um, you know, working with clients. I think a lot of times for those, those of us in the field, this field of mental health, we kind of take for granted the knowledge that we have about um, how to deal with emotions, how to cope with emotions, and and um, being able to to teach that to other people. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a whole there's a whole realm of knowledge that people ha- don't have that they don't that they don't know they don't have. And yeah. so yeah, yeah, and so and, and I'm I'm the same way. There's a lot of stuff I don't know, I don't know. Um, yeah. I think uh I think one of the things is is that um and this this hits to the the kind of the marketing side of things. I think the more we can share our knowledge with people just even on the front end. I mean just um you know, um, one one example that comes to mind is I know this is something that's just really popular in um, in social media these days within our within our industry or our profession, and that's just doing a lot of memes about mental health and self care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I think as prof- those of us that are in this, you know, we read those memes. This, well, that's simple, but the truth of the matter is, is that that's not something that we can take for granted that everybody knows. Mm. Yeah, memes. They're a they're <laughs> a viral archetype from who knows how long. You know? Oh yeah, and, and the oh, the yeah. current iteration of you know snagging a picture and putting block letters on it is our is our interpretation of the meme. But uh-huh. that's a that's a big huge trend. And you had a lot of interesting things to say there. Uh, you know, another uh, 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 the opposite side of that same coin is that, uh, and I'm not a clinician. I don't pretend to be one. Um, and I have, as an example, as a story, I have a, fr- a person in my life. I want to identify a very special person to me, and uh, they are a tremendous play therapist. And they had to go to Wyoming to uh, do some real deep pl- uh, sand tray work. And part of that training and certification was for them to do the sand tray work themselves. Mm -hmm. And I just sat back and watched how nervous they were to experience that, even though, you know, if you turn to the tables, they would say, well, the sand just shows you, you know, I hardly Mm -hmm. even have to do analysis. The sand just speaks. And so for them to be put in that position, sometimes, uh, you know, whether it's called, we called it in the technology world, when I worked at an email marketing platform eating your own dog food. You know, it was like, mm-hmm. well, are we doing our own email marketing? Are we mm-hmm. are we doing these blocking and tackling things? You see it in the marketing world off all the time with agencies who are falling down on their own website and their own social media and email. I have that challenge because of resources. And, and then on, on the clinician side, uh, we do this thing called try on therapy, which lets any attendee of the conference do an actual real onboarding session, because I'm not going to assume that simply because you're providing this mental health care that, um, that you're also providing that for yourself. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it is the cobbler's kids that don't have shoes. And sometimes it's the cobbler that doesn't have shoes. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of that hiding in plain sight opportunity. Um, And and we're taking that another step. Last year, we did group therapy on stage, which was a really neat experience. And we mainly used clinicians because they had just sort of a a great approach to that and talking about career burnout. And this year, we're going to do virtual reality uh, try on therapy. And that is Mm -hmm. not that hasn't been solved for, you know, simply wearing the goggles for a long period of time can be uh, can be, uh, can make you dizzy and different things. Mm-hmm. And how are we going to provide this care? But those are curious questions that we can prod into. So we're going to be talking VR. We're going to be, we're going to have some goggles on site. We're going to be talking AI. We're going to be talking, uh, psychedelics. We're going to be talking about hard conversations because in my experience, th- this is talk therapy is a lot about hard conversations that we push into that we get get into instead of avoiding eye contact with them. And, mm-hmm. and, um, and there's a, there's an author I really like named Nassim Nicholas Taleb. And one, one thing he says is it's not the crime, it's the cover up. 
So, you know, that's where I found myself once I, once I uncovered my own lies and my own Mm -hmm. um, strategies and tactics to cover things up instead of just facing it head on. That's when, that's when I was freed and open to, to go forward. And that's what, if possible, I want for everybody who can possibly experience that. So yeah, yeah, it, it is a conference about mental health and marketing, but really it's about, it's about a lot more than that. And I think that's kind of speaks to the heart of it. Right, right. Yeah, I think one one of the things, uh, again, that uh, you just kind of sparked in my thinking is um, we we as therapists in general, and I'm painting with a broad brush here, we can uh, we we are real attentive to other people's needs um, and knowing what's going on with others. But where we maybe miss the mark is being aware ourselves of what what our own needs are. And um, one, one big mistake that a lot of us make is we will forsake our own needs for the sake of clients and, and patients and that kind of thing, which is on the surface is a noble thing. But in, in the long run, I think we do ourselves a disservice by not allowing ourselves to experience therapy. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I, you know, I think every one of us in this profession needs our own therapist. And I think if we did a poll, I think we would all be shocked at the number of people that don't. Um, and I, I don't say that in a shaming way, but I mean, it's just something I think we have to be aware of. And I, I love that idea of doing, doing like group therapy on stage, because that's, uh, I think that that can impact people in many other ways, because people that might not be on stage will something will happen that will resonate with them and create change for themselves. Yeah, yeah it, it was moving. You could hear a pin drop in there mm-hmm. and they got pretty real, which I didn't know what would happen. I had a lot yeah. of apprehension myself. And and you're right. There is I think there's the individual and the community at all times acting and uh, as much as we want to, and I have a lot of empathy toward that caregiver that wants to do as much as they possibly can and extend themselves and stretch themselves. And at the same time, uh, one analogy that my brother gives me, he's about eight or nine years ahead of me. So he's mm-hmm. always on the, the horizon. I can barely see where he's going <laughs> and I, I ride his coattails yeah. and he gives me these little bits of wisdom. I, I've started calling the Dave, my Dave of the day. They happen so often. And he says, uh, and he's a big Formula One guy. He says race cars have brakes so that they can go faster. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think Andretti said that. And so Mm -hmm. it is when you are, when you're maxing out and you're redlining all the time, that's when we start to lose races in in the long game, maybe in the short game, you know, Mm -hmm. quarter mile, you can do that. But if we're simply if we're simply revving all the time and there's no space, there's no quiet, that's, that gets to be unsustainable. And, and another component that we're seeing more this year are the tech companies. So we're going to have a a panel of technology companies. And there is some skepticism, I think, from some providers about what is technology really doing and, uh, and are they doing more harm than good in some cases? And, and there's also, some incentive talk in built into that, that we need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Maybe the structure of the incentives is changing and we're uncomfortable with that. And I want to welcome that voice in. So uh, Solome from Going Digital, uh, a wonderful conference about behavioral health technology is going to moderate a panel. And she's already introduced me to three or four uh, national companies with Mm -hmm. a great presence that are trying to solve for this same challenge from a different a different direction because back to your point that I saw a meme the other day that was something to the effect of, uh, I, I wish I could just text my therapist and say, Hey, what's up fam? Like, this is what's happening. And, mm-hmm. and I don't, I, I'm not good with slang, but that was the, the, <laughs> the gist of it. And I picked yeah. up on that. That was like, okay, maybe that is already happening. Maybe you, mm-hmm. you as the consumer don't know that there's an app or an experience that would let you have this fractional therapy. And and to the point that the gentleman I was sitting with, with last night um, and his own frame of reference and mine coming together and creating something new, you know, I think he said, what w- the words matter that we use and mm-hmm. and is therapy the word getting in the way? and how do we understand fully the word trauma? And so I said, yeah, I, 
I think of it as an analogy of professional athletes. Like if we go from the hypothesis that, or the statement that the mind and the body are so intertwined and we've separated them. Um, and if we can put those back together and say, how would a, a, a football player, a soccer player, whoever, uh, optimize their performance on a day-to-day basis with those metrics. And it would be oftentimes engaging a strength coach or engaging a fitness coach. Mm-hmm. And we let's do the same thing, you know, and, yeah. and some people might need more coaching. So there, there's, there's a big wheel that we all spin of our bio luck. And some yeah. people have it very different than others. And that's where we're always going to have to have a compassionate safety net. And at the same time, the more that we can it's education. It's a big part mm-hmm. of education. And we see this around the world. Education is one of those things that unlocks, um, unlocks our own power and our own, our own agency. And I've even thought about taking this to other countries, you know, not just mm-hmm. maybe over to the UK, but India and, and, and China or, you know, South Africa or different places that I think this conversation needs to actually unlock entirely the same way that we're seeing uh, this battle over cryptocurrency and blockchain being sort of an unleashing of currency as both electricity and money. And mm-hmm. if we can get that electricity de-siloed from these market makers and get that flowing freely around the world. I mean, if I think about my body, I mean, breathing, blood flow, water, uh, all of those things, my own energy, it's all, it's all waves and, and flow. And mm-hmm. I can tell when I'm clogged up, I can tell, oh man, I've got something going on in my lungs. It's not as good as when I'm, I can get out on the road and, and pound the pavement and get some miles in and, and come mm-hmm. back refreshed. So if we think of ourselves as one and the world at the same time, then it's, it's simply a body that we're, we're trying to get healthy. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh boy, there's so much we could talk about, Steve. Oh yeah, and I know, oh yeah, I know. I'm enjoying it too. Oh it's yeah, great to this talk is with you. this is great stuff. This is exactly the kind of conversations I, I have. But I want to be aware of your time and uh, be respectful of that. But um, as we maybe kind of close wrap things up, what what do you see as maybe some of the um, well? Let's see how to ask this question. What what are you seeing as the some of the most important trends that we need to pay attention to mm. in mental health marketing. Yeah. That's a great question and a big one and I do mm-hmm. I think we could talk for hours. This uh-huh. has been a lot of fun. I appreciate yeah. you bringing me on. I think I think there are still big conversations to be had around access and payment for sure. Mm-hmm. And I think I think raising the tide on our our little boat of awareness, mental health awareness through B2B means is one way that we can raise the tide on all of those boats, uh, even to the point of maybe affecting policy or policy makers and making waves. Um, I think mm-hmm. the trends are, you know, we have to we have to take very different approaches if we are taking insurance or Medicaid versus if we're a private pay organization. So those are those are strategy decisions to be made. I think there are, again, because, you know, I think the mom and pop that hangs their shingle out right now fills up their books. And I think someone is coming to eat your lunch is what I think. And Mm -hmm. yes, there's a big sunsetting of, of um, clinicians at that age and have built the time that it takes to have that expertise and I know that the trend of Gen Zs who are light years, again, light years ahead of uh, the passion and the interest in this space are going to create a, a new tidal wave of people passionate about solving for this themselves. And it may not, it may or may not be an hour long session once a week with a, with somebody listening to you on the other side. It may mm-hmm. look very different, just like oh, yeah. this conversation 10 years ago or 20 years ago was impossible. You know, we couldn't even hardly imagine that you and I could have this high def conversation Mm -hmm. and connect as humans. So I would say, let's stay open to the impossible. And there are going to be innovations probably being worked on or dreamed on right now that in 10 or 15, 20 years at scale, potentially. And that's the other thing is that private equity and others are, are chipping away and working away at this very diligently 
with an expectation of a return. And a return mm-hmm. is not just money, but uh, long-term success with solutions that work for the market. They're incentivized mm-hmm. that way. So right. we always need to blend the heart and the mind and you know, for love or money, those kinds of things. I think that's, I think we swing that pendulum too far one way or the other. And it's certainly coming back. I don't think it's wrong or right, but you mm-hmm. can certainly anticipate that there's going to be a uh, a shift back the other way. And hopefully we can find a center and sort of a, a peace with, um, with that oscillation. Um, but mm-hmm. usually with, like with all things, the market never moves in a straight line. It's always a wave, but it's right. forward. It's a, it's a Fibonacci growth sequence yeah. forward. So that's, that's my optimism. Those are some of my yeah. trends that are, that are interesting to me. And yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to continue the conversation and hear what, sure, what you have sure. to think because you get to talk to all sorts yeah. of fascinating people. Oh, every yeah. Day. Well, yeah, you know, I, um, I know we said we were going to wrap up, but here's one thought that I, yeah. Um, uh, that, that came to me and I, this is a, again, an observation, you know, one of the, one of the, I, I guess, kind of the cornerstones of, of mental health therapy and mental health counseling and that sort of thing is the, is this whole idea of, of, uh, confidentiality yes. and that, um, and, and the reason it's there, I think, if you really think about it is because, for somebody to have a mental health issue, there's a stigma around it, or there's some sort of shame associated with that, which I think is maybe, you know, and, you know, certainly protecting people's privacy is, is, you know, uh, a huge value, which I think always needs to be in, be in place. But I think Mm -hmm. as we were, as, as we're increasing the conversation around, mental health. And yeah, I think about uh, celebrities and athletes and people that are coming out more and more about their struggles with mental health and oh, yeah. all the, all that goes with that confidentiality takes on a new, it takes on a new form in a way. Mm-hmm. And so I think, um, yeah. And so I think with the, with the advent of, you know, tech, and just instant access to everything. Um, I think our paradigm for providing therapy and providing services, as you've alluded to, is going to be, it's going to look totally different five, 10 years from now than it does now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And maybe this is just my worldview, but I, I, I react to that with that concept of uh, yes. And what is that? What is that balance? Because that's been mm-hmm. a that was a big topic in 2022, not just on stage with our conference, but in the coffee hours and the kind of informal chats that happened mm-hmm. were how much can I share? What what can and can't I share? And how am I going to leverage story without uh you know without disclosing something that I shouldn't? And mm-hmm. and ultimately I think the the patient is walking that line between the yin and yang and saying, Mm -hmm. without being coerced or manipulated, I choose, I choose to Mm -hmm. make my story something that I can talk about. And, and that's my decision. And, and then you can, you can go down the road of how the the clinician or provider or group can, can use that to really connect with somebody much more than saying, oh, you know, one out of four, one out of five people are struggling and 50% Mm -hmm. of those people don't get care. Some of those things roll off our back compared to, oh, I, I know the principal at my high school and, and, and she's doing something with mental health and, and uh, we're more and more comfortable talking about that. Mm -hmm. And, and there again, I, maybe this is just my personal preference and I would agree with you on that point of, you know, whether it's, well, let's just talk mental health. There is an aspect of my own health generally that I think, I certainly hope we don't swing that pendulum to the point where I don't have a choice or free agency to say that I'd like to keep it private if I if I choose. I think right, we can't right. we can't say privacy is all bad or all good or or either. You know, we can't mm-hmm. we don't even need to label it. And but you're right. I think not. But and it it is exciting to see how the information gets shared. I think that's what it is. We had we had two directors of education from the Kevin Love Fund, and he's just one example. The basketball player who was very open and you never know what it means. Right. And in, in my own little way, in my own little bubble, you know, to see that now just a few years later, I'm running this conference 
that's so exciting and people love coming and, and the community is wonderful. And I, you know, that all was from this little acorn that grew out of that experience mm -hmm. for me. So we don't know how exponentially we can improve or fall off. You know, there's logarithmic movements here that are well beyond linear progress. So sure. yeah, that's, that's my silver lining. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, Steve, uh, again, I want to thank you for being on the podcast. And uh, again, we'll, we'll continue this conversation, I'm sure, um, because there's there's lots of rich stuff here that we can, you know, I think we we all um, are passionate about and that sort of thing in our field. So tell folks a little bit more how they can find out about the conference and connect with you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And and it's so fun to talk to somebody so well versed and passionate mm -hmm. about it. And uh, thank you for having me on. Mm -hmm. the, the conference is uh, easy to, to get some more information to. We just rolled out a new website and the URL is M as in mental, H as in health, marketing.org. So mhmarketing.org. We are we have a call for speakers out right now. We do provide uh, CEUs uh, as well as a, a range of other content from 101 to very advanced marketing and advertising and PR topics. And then we always do some things for the humans, regardless of who, who you are and your job title. Uh, you can also find us online uh, on LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. uh, mental health marketing conference is where we're busiest. We'll probably be quite a bit more active on Facebook and Instagram this year, trying to do more of the things that we preach yeah. and uh, we do our best with that. And um and then send me an email if uh, you need anything, okay. if I can make the experience different. It's all on the website there. Okay, awesome. And we'll have links in the show summary and show notes for people to access oh, that easily. Well, Steve, again, thanks. Thanks for being on the podcast. And I'm sure we'll be talking again here soon. Again, big thanks to Steve for being on the podcast. I really enjoyed my conversation with him and just really thinking about the trends in mental health and how we provide our services and just all that's changed. You know, when I first got into this field a little over 20 years ago, I'm dating myself. And as my friend Amy Fortney Park says, we're part of the OG, the old guard uh, in this field. A lot has changed. And the way we think about Providing services has changed, and I think we got to be flexible with that and be open-minded to all of those different changes that are coming along. And I'm real excited about the Mental Health Marketing Conference. I hope to be part of that and um, hope to maybe see you there if it, it comes about um, in September. So, But be sure to check it out, Mental Health marketingconference.com and there'll be links here in the show notes and the show summary so you can get to that easily and um, also if you are and if you are interested in maybe starting your own podcast I'd love for you to go over and check out the new course that is going to be a live course that's going to be offered on March the 31st and be sure to check it out just go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash podcast course and you'll be able to find out more about that and what all is involved. I'm really excited to be able to offer this because I've had a lot of people ask me about starting podcasts and what it what it takes and how to do it and that's what this course is intended to do is to help you out with all of that. So be sure and check it out. Practiceoftherapy.com slash podcast course. And also, again, big thanks to our sponsors of the podcast, Mental Health Match, mentalhealthmatch.com. And if you go over and check them out, you will be able to use the promo code just practice and be able to try them out for 90 days for free. I think they're, they've got a good thing going with being able to help connect you with your ideal clients. And also be sure and check out our other sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. They are the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers. They're who I use in my practice and uh, couldn't do without them. And be sure and check them out at practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes and use the promo code just Gordon and you can try them out for two months for free. 
And as always, be sure and take time to follow us wherever you might be listening to the podcast. And also check out the other great podcasts on the Sightcraft Network. And you can go to sightcraftnetwork.com. Got a lot of great other content there and some really premium uh, podcasters in that network along with this one. So be sure and check it out. And thanks again for joining the podcast and looking forward to chatting with you again next week. You've been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. You can find out more about the other great podcasts in the network by visiting psychcraftnetwork.com. And if you haven't done so already, please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com and get your free private practice startup guide, along with a lot of other great resources and webinars and free things just by visiting. Also, be sure to follow us wherever you might be listening to your podcasts. This podcast is intended to be educational in purpose and is not intended to give legal, accounting, or counseling advice. If you need a professional, find the right person for that.